Hey guys, welcome to the Ford Tech Center, the Ford Performance Tech Center here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Evan Smith, Rev and Evan, and we got Tim Smith. So we're gonna talk tech, we're gonna give you some of the details on this car. I know we've gone through the dark horse a little bit in uh, previous videos, but being in the Tech Center and being with Tim, we're gonna get a deep, 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 deep look at this thing, and we're gonna be driving it real soon. Tim, great to have you on the channel. Yeah, hey, thanks, it's great to have you here. Dark Horse Mustang, 500 horsepower out of five liters, which is cool all into itself. Absolutely. The big thing people, I think people are gonna to wanna to know is how does it compare to a Shelby GT350? So talk oh. to me first about the engine, Golly. and then take me through the aero, the suspension. Why would somebody wanna buy this car? Yeah, so this is obviously our first naturally aspirated 500 horsepower, five liter. Um, from a 350, this is still a cross-plane crank car, not a right. flat-plane crank, so that, there's that difference. Um, and, and really, it's just later on. So this is just the fourth generation Coyote. This is all of our best, all of our newest, everything that we want to move forward with. And smaller displacement than the GT350. Yeah, it, it, yep, that was a 5.2, obviously. This is a 5 liter. So right. um, the way we get that, it's, it's all about airflow, really. We, we, you can see if you saw up in the front of the car, we do have the dual air inlets. We have the dual throttle bodies. That feeds into an engine with revised uh, exhaust cam. We changed the duration on that to take advantage of the extra air coming in. And then we also made some changes to the oil pan that reduces some of the windage, some of the frictional losses with okay. the crankshaft spinning at high speed. Um, and then we also did some revisions on the exhaust manifold, specifically on the left-hand side, to help with the flow of air through the motor. All of that together, plus the connecting rods from the 5.2 liter GT500, to give us the durability, and then the engine calibration to take advantage of that durability, take advantage of that extra air, is what lets us get to the 500 horsepower. Awesome, so much like a GT350, uh, it shares the same transmission, right? Yep, Tremec 3160, uh, we all know and love it. A couple little detail changes just for the new application, but internally in the same box. Cool, and then gearing in the back? Gearing in the back, if you get a manual, you get a 373. If you get an auto, you get a 355. They both have a torsion and limited slip differential. Cool. Now, we were talking shifters before, we got the feel, the shifter feels fantastic, and it looks cool too. One yes. of the reasons is this. Talk to me about this. Yeah, so this is the, if you get a manual, it comes with a titanium shift knob. You can see it's this beautiful anodized blue. Uh, that was actually inspired by the bluing on the exhaust headers on a Ford GT, the titanium exhaust. All right. So it's a very evocative color. We wanted to do something with it. Um, what's really kind of trick about this part is it's titanium, but it's 3D printed. So what Evan's holding here is what the part looks like when it comes out of the printer bed. So there, I don't know how many they do at a time, but they do a bunch. Uh, I think they sit in there like this. So this part is actually 3D printed. Um, it's not solid inside. You can kind of see we, you know, minimize the amount of material. Also good for uh, reducing the thermal mass a little bit so it cools down quicker because metal shift knobs do get, do get warm, but oh, yeah. it still gets pretty warm. But this is a great example where, especially on cars like this that are lower volume, um, sort of marquee products, we, we can experiment with this sort of new technology, new materials, new processes with old materials, and, and see how it fits, see how it works, see what the pitfalls are, and learn something about it. And then maybe later on, we can spread that through other cars, you know, other products in the company. So it's a great learning tool. So talk to me about aerodynamics. What makes this car better than a GT as far as aero and downforce? Yeah, so the, the aero story on this car, it was really about getting the balance right. and. Um, and a lot of that had to do with the new tools that we had. I, I think, you know, I was talking to a couple of the vehicle dynamics guys, and um, I think this is, a, this is the first Mustang we've done that, that the, the through line from having a model on the computer with CFD, right. and then being able to build that in the simulator, which right across the room behind that wall. Is yeah, the we saw that, we got yeah, to check that out. Pretty sweet. Um, and then taking what you've done in the simulator, putting it in the wind tunnel right. on the rolling road, confirming that, hey, everything I saw in the in the simulator we're seeing here in the tunnel and then getting out to the track hitting the track and having it match i mean mike and jamie who i think you know they were super excited about it. they got out and they like, hey th this is what i felt when i drove it in the simulator and that's awesome because that, that that shortens our cycle time that shortens our design time or if we have time it gives us more time to optimize and it it really freezes up to make the car better, to be able to optimize right. it. So, in a lot of the story, it's, it's not just about the new parts, but it's about the new tools that we have, that we have at our disposal to use, and a lot of that comes from racing and what we do in this building here. That's awesome. I'm a big naturally aspirated guy. So yeah, me too. I bought a GT350, I thought about trading it and getting a 500, but I just, I love that high RPM capability of the 350. I really enjoy my car. 
I could see if you have a GT500, this might not be your cup of tea. But if you're a current GT owner or a current GT350 owner, why would you buy this car? Yeah, so, I mean, GT owner, that's kind of no brainer, right? This is the next step up from that car. Right. If you, uh, you know, if you have the means and the motivation, this, this is the one you want to step sure. up to. Uh, GT350, that's, that's a more nuanced, that's like a car guy over beer question because it, it, it's really a different flavor car and, it, and I'm kind of with you that that's a very uh, yeah no I want an a, honest and I worked on that car uh, so maybe that's also and I worked on this car um, that is a very visceral piece with the flat plane crank and, and you know it revs to the moon and, and the sounds that it makes um, when it's doing so I think it, it, the simple answer is both and then uh, depending on the day of the week how uh, how your vibes are going you, you pick the best tool for the job that day well it's always I, Tim's always honest I worked with Tim I got to do some neat test driving uh, back in the day on the GT500 and the GT350 with Tim as an engineer working and we kind of worked together so you know my feedback was important to him and Absolutely. it was an honor to be able to do that kind of stuff. So I think having driven the GT, this car is going to bring a different experience because of the kind of, I call it the glass cockpit and just everything's up the notch from a modernization standpoint. Absolutely. Does it give me that ooh ah of the GT350? Is it one level above the GT or is it 10 levels above the GT? And I think that answer is gonna only come from driving the car. Absolutely, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, right? So Awesome, so a couple more just quick questions. Talk to me about suspension and tires. Yeah, so um, let's start with the tires because that's the most fundamental thing to get into handling the car. So we do have unique Pirellis for the dark horse, there's a, if you get a base dark horse, it's a P0, mm -hmm. um, designed specifically for the car, tuned specifically for the car, and then if you step up to the handling pack, you get the Trofeo RS, also right. bespoke for the car. Um, the great thing about these is we, Pirelli did a great job, they worked really hard, they're actually at the track, you can talk to them tomorrow, which will be great. Um, at every track we went to, these were quicker than our outgoing tire. Uh, at every track we went to, these lasted longer than our outgoing tire, which is okay. which is awesome. If you're doing track days, you'll get more laps in before sure. you need to throw a new set of shoes on. So we all appreciate that. Um, but it's, it's a great package, a great handling tire. So then around that, then you tune the suspension, right? So Magnaride is standard on all dark horses. Um, we did have Magnaride on the outgoing car. The difference here is we just have their latest, greatest software strategy. Okay. Um, there's a lot more tools in that toolbox. So guys like Mike Dozio have a lot more knobs they can pull. Smart guy. So, yeah, it's a very smart guy, and you'll get to talk to him tomorrow as well. Um, but to really optimize everything that the tires bring to the table, we can get that all, you know, because he's got so many knobs to pull. And the great thing about it is, and maybe one of the biggest compliments we've gotten is folks outside the immediate Mustang team at Ford have started driving the cars more, is that we could be way more precise with all those controls which really translates into a car that you can drive every day on the road and is also a really awesome track weapon. And probably the biggest compliment we get is they come, you know, I let someone take a car home for a night, they come back and give me the key and say, holy crap, Tim, I, I could drive that car every day, which right. is high praise for someone who lives in Southeast Michigan if you've ever driven on those roads. Oh yeah, so, um, craters. Craters, it's incredible. So it's really, you know, it's a whole package coming together, us having more tools in our toolbox Right. to tune it and refine it that really makes the car feel how it feels. Well, and that's where I want to compare it to the GT350 because even though I live in Florida where we have <laughs> relatively flat, smooth roads, a lot of the back roads where I drive, the roads are heavily crowned because we get a lot of rain. Yep. So the roads are designed in Florida with a lot of crown to them. And the GT350 is very darty. Yeah. That front end alignment and the front tire size makes the car kind of hunt around a little bit. You've got to really pay attention when driving it. And that's one thing I noticed driving the GT the other day, and you can see our review of that, which is on the channel as well. The steering was so much nicer. It had the great handling, really good, accurate turn-in, but going over imperfections in the road, you didn't feel it through the steering and the car was not darty at all. Right. And for reference, did you drive, was it a performance pack? You know? It was a performance yeah, pack. Yeah, so that, that performance pack tire that you drove, the GT performance pack, that is common with the base dark horse, the non-handling pack dark horse. Okay. So again, Pirelli did a really great job tuning in the tire metrics to help exactly what you're talking about. Um, since you mentioned steering, a couple other things, and this is across the board on all the 7th gen cars, is we were able to decrease the steering ratio a little bit. So the steering's a little bit quicker, 15.5 okay. to 1 ratio instead of 16. 
Um, probably more critically is uh, in the steering shaft, we used to have a, a rubber bushing in there basically. We were able to get rid of that and just go to a spline shaft. So the steering's a lot stiffer. The cross car beam that it m mounts to is a lot stiffer. Okay. All of that adds up to really give you that very precise, very nice on center, very responsive car. And, and that's a pretty big step up from the outgoing right. product. It's something that you, know, you mentioned it and every, almost everybody I've talked to said, oh my God, this thing's steer is awesome. And, and that's all some of that goodness that we put in. Yeah, the steering was very accurate. My only critique of the steering was it felt, it felt a little light. Okay, effort-wise? Effort-wise. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping there's a little more heavy Yeah, we've got feel. more here. Um, and, and that's a tunable, and that's one of those things we'll probably, I, you know, if I was a betting man, right. I'd say over the years we'll keep refining all that. But Okay, so let me ask you a question. You use terms like we could in terms of like removing the, the damper and the steering and making a thicker shaft. What allows you to make those changes from a technical standpoint? It's, um, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, experience, getting more comfortable with the platforms, these sorts of things. A lot of it is, is things like having the better Magneride controls means that, you know, having, having, to have a, having to have a bushing in the steering system, maybe we don't need to do that. We can tune around that, cool. that need, these kinds of things. It's just, it's evolving our knowledge, it's evolving our tool sets, it's, you know, Again, Mike, smart guy. He, you know, he's always thinking. People like him are always thinking, and we're just, we're just able to get to a place where we know the car very well, and we can just we're always working on making it better. I mean, that's all what we're, you know, every day we come to work, and that's what we're thinking about. Right. So, so it's it's experience, it's time, it's, it's advancing tools. the current product. Yeah. You know, when you stick with a platform, even though it's S650, a lot shares a lot of S550, and I guess that's what really you you it's all about the refining. Absolutely. I mean, this is, you know, this type of architecture we're very familiar with. Um, we've been working on these for a long time. So the, the uh, opportunity to refine is, is a welcome one. <laughs> awesome. Well, we hope you enjoyed the interview with, uh, with Tim Smith. And we're having fun out here at the Tech Center. We're going to get behind the wheel of this thing next. It's going to be a fun day. We're going on track at the world famous Charlotte Roval, I believe, right? The Roval. We're going to run half the Roval, but it's, a, it's an excellent track. You're going to get a ton of laps. I think you're gonna have a ton of fun. Um, drink a lot of water tonight. It was wicked hot today. Yep. But uh, we'll talk to you after you do that. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man.